Good morning, everybody. This morning I had a couple of little frustrations, technically. And so we're starting quite late and without sending out an announcement on the WhatsApp list. So I apologize, especially to those good people. And everything got delayed as a result. Quite a ways down here under the slopes, or under the cliffs of the, the southern part of our bell. But that's life. Not every day rolls out the way you want it. It's a problem trying to get the WhatsApp out and it wouldn't go out for me. Couldn't get the connection and the new phone that's operating without the chip just by interaction with this phone. So those are the little challenges of life. So the sun is a little ahead of the, ahead of the game today. A lot of people up there in the camping ground, jet skis and paddle boards out on the lake. We had a lot of visitors yesterday from Germany, from Denmark, from New Zealand, from the United States. A group from Brazil came for lunch large group and the disciples are also on the move some portions of the chapter 12 we haven't read it's worth reading it in chapter 11 in the Acts of the Apostles there's an account of the death of Herod there's an account of <coughs> the prophecy of a famine <coughs> in Judea and the community in in uh, Antioch since relief and that's a beautiful very early testimony of the solidarity between the different communities of believers that continues to this very day so in that simple opening line of today's reading that once the relief mission uh, was completed so now they're back in Antioch again and now a whole new step happens and it happens through prayer through impulses received in prayer and fasting and then there's the laying on of hands for the assignment to the mission and Paul and Barna set out explicitly on a mission toward Cyprus and that mission has never finished to this day I would say neither in Cyprus nor in the whole world because every new generation poses a challenge for the reception of the gospel. <coughs> Two of our, our team members, a married couple, came back with their twin babies, David and Elena, after a year away, and they left in a hurry. Uh, to Spain where Elena hails from and she was expecting to deliver in July and she delivered right away in May two preemies 
and now they're starting their lives. They're very different, Miguel and Mateo. And they're receiving so much love from the parents and everybody else who interacts with them. The work that every mom and dad knows of raising a child. The work starts when they're born, although there's a lot of labor that the mother goes through to bring that child to life. A lot of support from her husband. And then once these children begin to talk and to eventually speak and eventually reason, they're going to need also the whole process of evangelization, every new generation. I remember once in, when I was working in Germany, up in the Ruhr area, I was at, actually at a funeral, and the priest there, the parish priest, was telling me that the living handing on of the faith from generation to generation was recognized as effectively truncated. It was finished. So even in a culture where people are strong believers and pass on the faith, genera faith generation generation, there is the challenge of evangelizing every new generation that's born. Our new people that marry in, new co-workers that arrive. I just saw a wonderful video yesterday from California in high school where 33 high school kids were baptized at the Easter Vigil. Just smashing kids, wonderful kids. And a number of them had never heard the name of Jesus before coming. They came obviously with families from other countries. Uh, and they had never heard about Jesus or the gospel. And so that school obviously was very blessed with the wonderful team of leadership and supporters and also students and families. And so the faith was transmitted to a whole new generation. The joy in that video is extraordinary. The emotion, the passion, the intensity, the, the celebration. It was a moment of great uh, recognition of the gift of grace that had been received. Somebody was here in the cave. Could be that that person is asleep there behind the, this big uh, saltwater pipeline. So I held my breath there a little bit, just in case. Two big purple herons coming out there, from right beneath our feet, basically. I'm going to perch you for a second on this big stone here. Another purple heron. Well, there were actually four of them all together here. In full view. So let me perch you here for a second to take care of something practical.
Thank you for your patience. So we might as well make it down to the very end here. Just for for the sea. I think we'll won't get to the gospel passage today. The comet that had mass this evening. It's amazing the expressions of the unity of Jesus and the Father. So so touching, so it reaches our hearts. So I even let you inside here with the camera. Now you're inside. And now you're out again. of nature so diverse so varied god bless you people see you later alligators just got another bird coming in here uh, just out of sight